Uh, it, it's not. I also have something that's free. I don't know, don't cost you anything. Um, I, I have one. It, it, this is something I use for the stack wing, which I'll show you later on. This is the body material for the stack wing. This is Australian lamb's wool, and I have a package of this for, for each of you. I also have a, um, a sample package of, uh, of all the sizes of hooks that are available from cartilage in the same, in part lead salmon flies. I'll give you each uh, <coughs> package of that. And I have a, um, I have my personal hat pin. I got one for each of you. So if I should forget all that, come up and demand it because I you know, sometimes get a little tired and you have to do a little, little, little dementia. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, the flies that he ties today all belong to the club. And we can use these as a way either today or the, tonight or all that mm. you need. And uh, I believe he's, well, he'll tell you what he's going to tie. I'm sure. By the way, I did a while, put together all that material we spoke about yesterday. I did you? Well, that blue thing you did. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? Some of that blue stuff? I got about five things. I, I, <laughs> I hope I have the right color. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many of you, have you all tied the uh, salmon flies, or would you rather that I tie stone flies and nymphs and stuff like that? Let's um, see, let's see, let's see. one, two, three, <coughs> four, five, six, two not here, have been involved in some salmon fly, <coughs> fly tying, and then this year we hope to have another uh, salmon class, and I think it's going to be in it. I need to study who is in it. Tom. So uh, there, is a, there is an interest in that. Thing. Let these fellows be the guys. You be the guy. Okay. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I, since I don't know where, where you are in your, in your center flight time, it's best that you got to speak up. You're here for you, not for me. You, you, I, w I want you all to get something out of this. And if you want to get closer, you feel free to come up closer. I, I, um, I tie my salmon flies mostly on uh, bodily hooks. Um, for, for, for two reasons. I think it's the best hooks that are made for salmon fishing, or for salmon flies. And I also get them for free, which is probably maybe the most important one. Now, I'm sponsored by, by Partridge. I've, I've been instructed to say that. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, the vice, uh, it does not have to be a vice like this. It is, it is important when you tie salmon flies that you are able to turn your vise so you can look at the fly on the other side and so on. And uh, there are many vices. You don't have to pay $500 for a vise like this. Whose vise is that? Uh, this is when the new the Ren Seti. And uh, the reason I, I use these, these vices is, is that they give them to me to use. And I, I would not spend that kind of money on the vise. It's not the vise that ties the fly. It's the practice. Yeah. So, don't, don't let this, don't be fooled into believe that you have to have a vice like this in order to tie a salmon flash. You don't. You could tie it with, a, with an ordinary uh, $25, $30 vice. You know, it's, it's not necessary to spend that kind of money. But some, some ties, uh, you know, they, they must have the ultimate, you know, like fishing with a $3,000 bamboo rock. You know. I think it's crazy, but uh, some people enjoy that. Hello there. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I thought I would just uh, put that little needle in you guys. <laughs> I think so. Well, we've been waiting since nine o'clock for you. So. <laughs>
What the hell What's your first name? H.W. H.W.? Uh-huh. Is that what you want to be called? H.W.? Yeah. It's that it doesn't have any... Whatever, Harry. You can call me Harry if you want. Oh, hey? Hi, <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'll call you H.W. <laughs> <laughs> what size hook is that, Paul? What size hook is that? That is... Um, uh, it is a tour... But it's it's the same size as a as another fiber, yeah. so it, it, it's a pretty good size, pretty good size fly. And a young fella came up for the salmon book one time. I was at his show, and uh, he said, "I've always wanted to find salmon flies." So he leaves through the book, and, and uh, I guess he'd been tying for a year, he'd been tying five flies. He leaves through the book and come up to me later and say, that's the one I want to tie. It was a job, Scott. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's... So like 40 pieces of material. Yeah, it, it, it's like, you know, you go out and you take one golf swing and you want to be part of the pro-am, you know. I mean, it's, it's, there are a lot of things that... Uh, that salmon fly tying is so different from any other kind of tying that... Uh, you kind of have to practice a lot. Now you can get you can get the floss the right uh, the right size. I just have this with me, so I split it because it's a little too heavy. You can get that in in uh, and get floss that comes in in, in thinner strands than this. There's so many different shades of yellow. Yeah. Material is, is important too in salmon flies. Um, learning to identify the best material is a whole, is a whole uh, education in itself. Use very, very fine um, silver tinsel for the tack on this fly. Um, I think I'm going to tie the green highland. And uh, always buy the best tinsel you can get. The best tinsel is the French tinsel. It's sometimes difficult to get, but if you, if you go around to the shows and you see good material, buy it. Don't wait. Don't say, oh, I'll get it next week because it may not be available next week. And good salmon fly material is so scarce today because some of the guys, they, they just can't get enough of it. They have drawers full of it, whether they need it or not. The tag starts right over the point of the bar. You don't modify that with these sweeping bends, folks. No. That's pretty standard. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty standard. And always uh, try to avoid right from the outset to get bulk. In other words, don't use any more turns of thread than you have to, because. What kind of thread do you generally use? I use uh, eight or tying thread, unit thread. Okay. And uh, I, I had the, the, the guy from the unit that came, came to my house one time and I asked him, and said, can you can you make them up on metal spools for me because I, I travel a lot and can't carry all the twenty. So he made up all his threads on these little spools for me. But they come in regular wooden spools. 
But I find these to be very practical to when you travel. You take them with you when you when you go. Take your material with you when you go on a trip. Um, you ever use the primrose under the? Uh... No, usually not. You can. You can use. You can use the primrose here on the but I tell you, the first ones you do, you should start with black thread, because when you start, when you wind the the uh, silver windings here, you cannot see if they are absolutely close. If if you if you use primrose thread, if you use black thread, you can eat, it's easily identifiable that you have a, a separation between two windings, and you've got to get a little closer. In the practice sessions you do, then you can switch to to primrose. You tie the whole fly with primrose until you get up to the head portion. To to put on a piece of material and pinpoint it, you want it to sit exactly at this particular spot. You can you can take it like this with the long end toward the rear and the shorter end toward the front, and then make a loop around the thread like this. You go like this and that's it, and it sits. Very simple. And untwist it so it's flat, and don't overlap. Just up as close as you can. Materials off underneath the shank. You have to. Another thing is, if you if you just come to to here and then tie it off, you will you will have you will see where it's tied off when you finish. You don't really want that. So you have to. The last turn, you come all the way around. You come all the way around with it, and then tie it off like this, because then you can you can it, you have completed the turn. You see. And it's just like this. You understand what I'm saying? No, I lost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If if I explain something to you and you don't get it, you've got to let me know so I can so I can do it over. What I didn't understand is tying off and didn't. Yeah. When well, you came around that side, aren't you coming back up on the side? Yeah, I'm coming you? up on my side with it. Uh, when I come around with the last turn. Yes. Now, if I would tie that off on this side here. Then you would you would see where I tied it off, right? Because it would be kind of crumpled in. You're gonna pull it down now? No, no, no. It isn't on the side and back of you right now. No, it's I I come up above and tie it off. Oh, you're gonna come back on the top now and tie no, it. No, no, I'm gonna cut it off now. Okay, I'm coming around. This is a. I have taken the last turn, right? Yes. Now, if I would tie that off over here, you would be able to see where I tied it off. But yes. now I come around like this. I have to back up with this thread. One turn with this thread because I don't want to pull it. You see? Okay. You won't see it now. It, it's completed. It'll be hidden too under the. Uh, yeah, it will. But but you 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 have to have it. You have to come all the way around with it. If you you, you understand it now. I understand it now, yeah. Okay. I thought you were putting both threads underneath the hook. No, that's no. what I lost. That's what got me messed up. Yeah, I see. And um, now I can use these pieces there as an underbody. 
just by playing it like here, like this. Now I build up a little segment in the back here where I'm going to mount the tail. Very neat. No, there's no bulk or anything. It's very smooth. Everything. Once you get bulk and you have to to tie something on on top of it, it it's very difficult to uh, it, it's very difficult to get it to sit right. The Orvis thread and the unit thread, same stuff. Or is it different? Okay. I ordered some units right the other day. I had some, uh... You had a 6-0 and 8-0. Don't tell me that. I've been using that 8-0. That's strong stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, really it's like 6 yeah. 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 If I forgot this, I'm going to kill myself probably. Oh, you're right. Okay, if you have, go ahead and do a nymph and I'll go home and get some. Well, how, come, how can I do this? Is that golden feather crab crab? Yeah. Wait, maybe it's in here, maybe. No, it isn't. Check my back on that. Maybe it's laying in there. That is. I bet you guys never forget anything. Probably. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The crests that you get are. They're steamed to death. In other words, they, they steam in the mud, they're all the points are burned off. You know. And. Uh, what time do go? It, it's very, very important. I, if you order material, and, and, and I'll tell you right now, I, um, I taught Paul Philippon when he started out 10 years ago. Uh, he came and spent some time with me. He wanted to know about fly, salmon flies and material and so on. And if you order from him, and I, I wanna, I'm not sponsored by him, he's not paying me anything for, for saying this, but I, I honestly believe he has the finest salmon fly material that you can buy. Uh, also, another one is uh, Honda's Angling Supply up in New Hampshire. They have good, good salmon fly material. Buying it from any other source, well, really, you don't know what you're getting. But if you order from either Donegal or from Honda's Angling Supply, and um, I'll give you the address of Honda's Angling Supply, but I don't have these cards here. But I got his catalog over here. You have his catalog? 92. Yeah. And uh, on, on small flies, you can use one. Uh, or if you get a good one, you can, you can use one, uh, one of these uh, uh, feathers. And if they're not, if they're not really um, the right curvature, what you can do is you can just put them down, soak them in, in, in water, lukewarm water. Take it, take them out, and put them down on a on a piece of paper to dry, or set it on a glass to get the right curvature. Like you can even do that with. Um, I'll just take one off here. Use saliva for this particular purpose. Just take some saliva here and then set it up on a glass to dry. And you get the right, the right curvature. Mm -hmm. This is not the right curvature for this one, but that's how you can get the right curvature. Mm -hmm. 
We get rowdy in the afternoons. Can't be. It's a little, a little early yet. <laughs> Are you with your finger? Did you try to take, put an indentation in there just now when you twisted that? Well, you were just twisting it around to, to get it shaped. Is that what you're doing? Slime and just so they stick together. And then I, I tie it on. Sometimes. Sometimes when you do that, you can put a little cement on here just to hold okay. it. What about putting? What about trying to put a, a mark on so it doesn't roll on the crimp? Crimp. That's when well, you do more on the crest. Crest. Yeah. Yeah. On the on the crest, the I crest do that. up there, you do. Yeah. <coughs> the tail is short short enough that you can control it enough. Yeah. Let, let me let me show you. It can be done this way, or the, it, let me tell you this. It depends on what what are you going to use the fly for? Are you going to frame it and hang it on the wall? And brag about it to your friends, or you're going to fish with it. That's that's the issue. If you're just going to fish with the fly, you don't have to be too okay. You just take this and you you wet it and you tie it in, and the fish won't know the difference. Now, if if you want it to really sit nice for a display fly and so on and so forth, yeah, I think you should take your time and and, and find the right curvature, and uh, and do a few things to it that will. That will help. Let me show you one time, one thing that I do occasionally. I take the the fuss off here. I find one that is the right size, and then I have a, a few of the fibers down here. Can you see these mm -hmm. fibers here? Okay. I'll put that down on the table. You're trying to avoid the tendency when you tie that it flares out on, on you close, yeah. close in there? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't want them to stray out. I don't mind they flare this way. Yeah, but they come out. Well, I don't want them to, to splay. Put some cement on <clears throat> Do you use that hard as nails for pretty much all your cement yeah. needs? Yeah. I, I tell you something, it is better. And it's even cheaper than when you buy in the store. You get a bottle like this for a buck and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The little brush is handy too. Yeah. What kind brush. of thinner would you use? Uh, you use a uh, nail polish remover. You also buy that in the drug store. By the way, if you ever engrave a fly rod with the white press on lettering, don't use hard as nails to uh, cover it. No? It dissolves the letters. Oh, does it? Mm -hmm. First hand experience. First hand experience. <laughs> well, they have, for, for rod building, I guess they have special glues and cements and stuff that they use. Can't quite see oh, through I'm it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. Just keep there. Yeah, see a little bit. Thank you. See, you're beginning to speak up and you're beginning to warm yeah. up. Now. Getting rowdy. <laughs> not put not put anything in there. <laughs> They all carry 357, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, I don't let it get too bad. I was warned. The chief of police up there in Moscow is a good friend of mine. I gave him a, a t shirt for Christmas. It's just Gestapo roller coaster. <laughs> what he warned me against, you were genius. He said, you, you, can, you can buy guns and Grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, case of for you to take back. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't have any time to spend in jail. So. See now, you see what I have here now. I have put some some fibers down along the side here. Now, when this is dry, what I can do is I can flatten this with my pliers. See, flatten the stem. Now I can I can take it if, if it's if I think it's going to sit up too high, then I can I can just take and I can bend a little bit. Okay. Take 
Then you look in, and you look in from the end and see that it sits straight up. Isn't that neat? Now, if you have a second material in there, it should be half again as long as the tail. And in this particular one, we have a since this is Queen Island, we have a with the tail veil, tail veiling. Huh? Tail veiling, I think so. Oh, thank you for correcting me. Would you like to sit here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll sit there and use a lot of lips. <laughs> <laughs> I use this. <laughs> uh, I use this, the shorter side here. So when you when you pick these, pick them so you have some markings so on this side because that's what I use for the for, for the uh, what did you call it? <laughs> I ain't gonna say. <laughs> I take a, a pretty wide strip, I'd say, of a, an egg on the end, or so. And then I just double the neck <coughs> twice, like this. And then I shoot. Switch it over, and then I trim it. I, I can trim it after I tie it in, or I can trim it first. Okay. Everything is just falling into place, but it takes 30 years of practice to be able to do that. So, so it, it looks very easy. That's another thing that you should you should check carefully when you buy buy her. That it's not these real long fussy ones that should be kind of narrow. You should have one that buy a whole stick that has you know, different lengths on it. But it should be nice and and, uh, and uh, not kind of you know broken. And kind of washed out. It should be good black hair. And since we don't have black ostriches, some 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 of them do have some natural blacks in there. And um, you cut them off the full length, but then I usually trim off a little because they taper in toward the stem. Ostrich hail hurl in contrast to peak hair curl doesn't have a side that, that's different than the other? Uh, no. Uh, the ostrich hurl <coughs> like this, the flues sit on the, on the side of a rectangular stem. The stem on, on, on these are rectangular, and I'll show you. Can you see this? This is the stem, and the flu sits like this on one edge from there. So they're actually on each edge of the top of the rectangle? Yeah. So when you tie it in, when you wind it, 
you should have that black stem forward. Um, when, you, when you hold it up like this, the flues have to sit on the rear edge and the stem has to point forward. So, it, it, so the fibers are perpendicular with the shank, right? And then, then you wind it in. It is actually wound like you would a, a dry fly handle. If I would have cut this, if I would have cut this, I would have, I should have cut it short enough for the, uh, so that the, the hurl would have covered up the rest of the end. But I wasn't quite sure since, since this stem is right short, I, um, I decided that I was going to wind it down on the shank as an underbody, which would be okay. How many turns do you normally make on the butt? Three or four. Oh, uh, it should be uh, just so it gets nice and full, four or five turns maybe. And uh, I, I generally stalk them back. I like them to sit back like a wet fly hat. But that's a matter of preference. I can identify my flies just the way sometimes they, they stalk back. Now, at this point, I have to put some the tinsel in now before I go any further, the ribbing tinsel. And I want the ribbing tinsel to sit on the far side. And the reason for that is that when I start winding it, I pull it tight. It it comes. It, I pull it toward me a little bit. It it comes autom automatically and it, and it starts underneath the the shank where it should start. If I tie it in underneath and then I wind it and I start the first turn, then it it comes up and it starts on the side of the hook. We don't want that. So you come to say we're putting it on the far side. Now we need the rest of this floss. We have the Green Highland that has a little yellow floss segment in the back. You know, I did uh, a couple of shows in Norway in, in, in June and uh, in an auditorium and it, it was like a one of these auditoriums they have in the big museums. And they had a hundred people sitting. And they had two television cameras on them. And monitors all over the place. We could accommodate a hundred people. It was beautiful. I mean, they could see everything. It was just like incredible. I did it in English too, mm -hmm. because Now we need the hackle to be tied in now. Uh, and the body hackle on this one is green. Am I keeping you off the uh, neck? No. Mm -hmm. I just got some sticky eyeball this morning. Mm -hmm. I forgot to put the drops in. Oh. 
When you select this, now some some tires use um, use saddle for this. I like to use real soft necks. Now this is not this is not the best neck I have with me here. I I couldn't I couldn't find my other neck. Uh, if you can get your hands on a on a Chinese dry fly neck, Chinese dry fly neck are, are, are nice and, and soft. They are not really any good for dry flies, to be honest with you. But the stems are nice and pliable, and it is really good for for the body handle on these flies. If you get the too stiff, and this this is really stiff material, and this this just shows you if you would. Uh, Bob Marriott in Los Angeles, you've probably heard about, about his, his story. He's got one of the biggest fly fishing material stores in the country, in the world, for that matter. And uh, this is the kind of stuff you can expect to get from, from them, because they are not salmon fly specialists. So what you would get, when I, I, when I was out there, I just picked up this snake off the rack, and, and that was the only one I could really find at that time. But the stem is very stiff, and it's really a dry fly neck, a white dry fly neck that has been tied. You can you can use it, but it's not the best. And saddle, of course, is useless for this. Saddle you you cannot control. Saddle is too stiff in the fibers. You can't really double it. It, it kind of sticks out, it looks like a woolly worm when you finish with it. You don't want that. You want to be able to stroke them down so they sit nice and, and blend in with the, with the rest of the fly. When you pick the hackle for, for the salmon flies, you, you should, there are two things you should, you should look for. First of all, the first fibers, the first winding here, the fibers should stay within the, the hook head, a little shorter than the hook head. And it, the fibers in front of the hackle should also be long enough so when you get up here, you can get the right, the right length or handle. And this seems to be about right. This is about a hook gap and a half up here. You describe that as green hollow to green? Yeah. But you can get so many very colors. No, green. this is green hollow to green. That's about the only thing that's right about this neck here. Is the color. You cut some, leave some of the stumps on here. This is a little too long for this. Now I want to double lock this. So what I do is I I tie it in so it point with the with the dull side up, pointing forward. back a little bit on here. Tie this in like this. Go back to where I wanted to start and then I fold it back. You see now when I fold it here then it's double locked. Mm -hmm. You cannot pull it out. You can break it but you can't pull it out. Uh, many times during the, the classes I've had when we are hands, tie hands on, that's a, that's a two day class. Um, you tie in the hackle and you put the seal fur on, you put the ripping, you come out. Then you start, you, you pull up and all of a sudden you, you stand around with the hackle in your hand and, and you have to do the whole thing over again. Mm -hmm. So by, as I say, you can still break <coughs> it but you can't pull it out. Okay, we need some uh, uh, green silver or substitute. 
This is not substitute. And sometimes you find this seal is, is maybe a little difficult to work with, but uh, there is a it's real seal. Yeah. We don't have the seal is not on here. We cut it off the seal to see it. <laughs> Those green seals are pretty rare. Yeah. Right? They're pretty rare. The <laughs> Almost extinct. Northern part of Greenland. Dangerous. Too bad, Barney. Are you yawning or enjoying yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, saliva is a marvelous thing. I try to get that marketed one. They do. Food truck and mm -hmm. but that's about the best flight type glue you have. It's also, you have to. It, it it might seem a little difficult to wind on here. What happened is that you don't put enough pressure on it. With with a little saliva and a lot of pressure, what is happening here? As I roll it, you're building up heat. You see, you're building up heat, and 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 since it's protein. Uh, it will, it will, uh, heat will kind of get it into, to a nice, uh, it will conform with, with the shape you want it in. And don't make it too heavy, not for this fly. time you come around, you kind of press it down with your fingers a little bit, roll it over with your fingers, just to get it to sit right. Oh, this is beautiful. Gorgeous. Are you getting all this on tape? Mm-hmm. Why? Right. It's the best one you ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to buy one of these tapes? <laughs> 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 you have a salmon fly. You didn't have a fly. No, in April, <laughs> uh, in April we were supposed to film one. In Walmart, you did that. Same company who did that one. In Walmart on Tuesday. It's not available in the stores anymore. But there are a lot of good substitutes, like Celex is one substitute. The other one is the one that Partridge just came out with, but uh, I didn't bring it because it's very expensive. Uh, it's $3.25 for a pack. And I, uh, I told him we can't sell it in this country. It's too, it's too expensive for a synthetic. Well, your Celex is still available, I haven't Oh, yeah. Celex is still available, and it's an excellent substitute. Could if you I use? Say so myself. Could you use Angora goat? Uh, it's not, well, if you blend it with something else to give it that spiky. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you can blend it with something. Angora is very soft, mm -hmm. and uh, if you can blend it with some material of similar color that's a little little more substance to it. Yes, you can. You, you blend the two, and, uh, and you'll probably be all right. When I first came out with this Celex product, uh, I was out in in Oregon on the Deschutes River fishing with a couple of guys, uh, including the owner of the um, uh, bookcase, the fly fisherman's bookcase, used to be up on Crowland Hudson, and uh, uh, I I kind of took it out and I just sealed. I took out and showed it to him. I said, to him, I said, here's what you're going to sell from now on. I said, I said what is it? I said, it is Celex. I 
said, what do you mean Silex? It sounds like something that come out of a vending machine in a men's room. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, it's the salmon, it's a seal substitute. He, he was very excited about it. He sold a lot of it. And then he went bankrupt, of course. Okay. Now, when you get up here, <coughs> you can bulk. You should not have any bulk. When you come up here, it's very important that you taper down the material a little bit up here. Also, you should leave yourself plenty of room for the head. It is always best to have more space up here than run out of space. You know, so leave yourself a generous amount of space up here for the head. And now, we're going to wind the tinsel. Five turns of tinsel. Only five turns. So you say, why five turns? Why not six? You know, the fish can't count. I said, that is not the reason. Five turns, when you have a body hackle on a fly, it's important that you don't have more than five because the stem of the hackle, when you wind it, should fall in behind and be hidden behind each turn of tinsel. And so if you had more than five turns, the hackle would be too dense. And then that would affect the, the fly when it swims. It just gets swept away. It's, it's too much hackle on it. So five turns. It's going to be such a beautiful fly. I don't think I'm going to give this to the club. I think I'm going to take it home. <laughs> well, we got one right there. Just <laughs> <laughs> like it. This one's got beepers on it. Got what? Put little beepers on. You carry it out here. Right <laughs> Check the <that> door. <laughs> you see? <laughs> You may, you can break it, but uh, and then in the old days, what they did was they doubled the hackle before they tied it in. That's because they didn't have a vice. They didn't use a vice. They used they held the hook in their fingers, so they had to prepare all the materials ahead of time. But we don't have to do that. We can double it now. Just a little saliva on your fingers, and then just double the hackle. I mean, double the fibers back. Each time you have taken a turn, and each turn should fall behind a turn of tinsel. When you come around, you put your fingers on it, and so the stem can untwist. This, as it hangs there, you've got the good side of the hackle pointing forward, and the dull side pointing back. That's the way it should be. So every time you take a turn here, and you come up, you double some more fibers back each time you're taking a turn. You see how easy it is to twist the stem here. That's why I want you to put your finger on it every time you make a turn to be sure that that on twists itself. Now when we come up here, we take some, just some close turns, a couple of turns, okay, and then tie that off underneath the shank. I don't want any bulk up 
on top because that's where the wing is going to be tied in. Stickier that I use with uh, Velcro on it. You see the male part of the Velcro, and you could use that and pull down some of the seal fur so it blends nicely in with the. With the it's like picking out a nymph when you're made a nymph, but you kind of pick it out. But I, I do it with this Velcro. It's very nice. You can also use this on your nymphs. It's much much easier to do it that way. See, this is hen. This is a hen there. It's very, very nice, soft stuff for the second color in the beard. Um, now that. That second collar in the beard should be a little longer than the than the front here. A little, little bit longer than the front of the green. That's about right. Okay. Sometimes I soften up the stem a little with my fingernails if I do too stiff. Tie that one in the, the, the same method as I used with the, with the other handle. I'm off. Okay. 
That was the so the body. But the <coughs> The next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare a we're going to prepare an underwater. The underwater thing on this flight is, is made of tippets. You can use your fall tackling method in, in the classic something. Yeah, sometimes. Not very often. another thing that's difficult to get a real good uh, tip. I say once you find a supplier that is and, and you explain to the supplier exactly what is it what it is you're looking for, then he'll get it for you. And when you get material that is not to your liking when you get send it back. I say this is not the quality I expect for my flies. And you explain to him, and uh, he will complain that there's no reason to buy stuff you can use. There are different curvatures and, di and different sizes, so I'll take one from one side of the neck and another from the other side, so I get the right, the right curvature. So I'll, I'll break that one, and I'll pick this one. <laughs> this one, and this one. So I get my curvatures on it. And that should reach from the tie end spot down to about the middle of the tail. Now, sometimes these can be real tricky to set. The best way to do it, as I have found, is to uh, cement them together. And make those up ahead of time. Just put some cement on the stem down here and just a little bit up on the, the bottom of those fibers. And you put the other one on top too. And you can do the same when you make the, the Durham Ranger.
the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the wing. And here we have the different wing material. And this fly that's uh, yellow. <laughs> My guys have to practice in the next room. <laughs> How many of you have have put wings like this together? Anybody? Okay. How did you <clears throat> make out? <laughs> how, how did you make out? Tough, tough. Yeah, what seemed to be the problem? Keeping yeah, keeping them married. After you get them married, they they tend to want to split on the ends, or mm -hmm. you know, the more you handle it, the more it seems to split for. Yeah, them. that's because the more you handle, the more the more grease you get on them, and, mm -hmm. and then so these little grabbers that no longer work. Mm -hmm. you see, they have little, it's like a ziplock. You know, they, that's how the, the wings on birds stick together. And the male and the female, but then they stick together. And, and you cannot uh, marry the left side to the right side. No. Each wing has to come, all the fibers from one wing has to come from the same side of the stem. Now, if you look at this further here, and you take this stem here, this would be the left side, and this would be the right side, right? Now, it would be, it would be m most logic, logical to say, because of the curvature we have in this, that this would be the wing over here on the far side, right? But that's not the way it is. It is completely in reverse. This being the left side of the feather, this being the right side of the feather. So if you just reverse that sort, that all the left side fibers is for the right wing. You see? For this wing over here. Because when they sit, they go into this nice low pattern like this. So we will take, we we'll divide our table up in in uh, left and right. And it's important that you don't mix them up once you get them cut. Well, what are you calling left and right on the fly now? Well, the, 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 the left wing is, is all, always the, for a right-handed tire, the far, the far wing. Okay. 
when the near wing for a right-handed tire is the right wing. As, as if you would, let's say, say that the fly would swim in this direction, and this would be the, the, the wing to this side would be the right wing, and this would be the left wing. Now, if you are if you are a left-handed tire, that's right. that would be that that will reverse it. It's also extremely important that you get good material for, for, for the, these feathers here. And, and once you get good stuff, you shouldn't have any problem with it. Now, sometimes I snip, I just cut these ends a little bit. It's okay to do that. Just cut the little tip, the tip in. <coughs> on, a, on a slant. You know. mm -hmm. <coughs> How many fibers are you? Oh, that depends. There are about four fibers, five fibers, depending on the size of the fly. I'd say for this one, there's about there's about five fibers in here on this one. And uh, I'm going to take one off because I think it's a little too wide. Do you still use your wing divider you made with a paper uh, clip? Sometimes, yeah. Until you get, uh, until you get the, the, if you tie a few of them, you, you can do it by hand because you know more or less. Uh, you, you get used to the, to the size you want. They should they should be the same width, you know, mm -hmm. so the wings, when you're finished with them, are pretty much the same size. Now I'll take the, the yellow. <laughs> Don't adjust your TV sets. <laughs> Dish went down. <laughs> okay, I need some. Uh, you can use uh, turkey tail for the, the, as a substitute for this uh, for this floor can because floor can. Pretty difficult to get now. If you find it somewhere, it's also very expensive. Now I need some uh, peacock wing. If you see some of these wings that are that you are a material dealer and. Uh, and they come in a pack, in a package. Take them out of the package. You want to see that they, that they are long enough, that they're the, that they're nice and long. Some of them are very short. You can't use them for anything. You should try to get the, the, the longest one possible, and and the feathers should pretty much match in in coloration. That's one thing that I can vouch for with, with, with uh, Donegal, that, uh, that you, when you buy material uh, uh, and you ask for large, 
like with long, long fibers, you get you get the right material, and he he grooms the right material. What's going on? Is there something I don't know about? What's going on here? Yeah, he had it. He just took a picture of it with his fingers over the lens. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look like that. Maybe. Uh, that uh, that's okay. <laughs> Oh, what my fingers? <laughs> that was the time. Okay. That was part of it, excuse me. It was the mention. Get the depth of field that way. Right. <laughs> depth of field. Okay. Now there's one more feather that goes in there. That is golden pheasant. And here again, you should, the golden pheasant tail, you should be see, see that the fibers are long enough. Of course, you should buy it. And these are these feathers are selected by 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 those who sell salmon fly material. And you should not spare any expense because it, it is really it is really uh, important to get uh, get good material. Otherwise, you can't tie good flies. That's a little coarser material than most of them, isn't it? I, I had yeah. problems with, with those. Oh, yeah? yeah? What kind of problems? I don't know, it just, just it seems stiff on and more difficult to marry. Oh, yeah. It's not, it, it's different. Texture. It's different texture than, than the goose shoulders. I think there's a lot of, don't tell anybody, but on these packages I have it, there's a lot of swan in there. Dyed mm. swan. Is that a, a more coarse texture, more similar no, to the No, but they are, they are sometimes That's a little longer. They, when they are white, they, they're a little more ivory color than, than, um, than the goose. And, uh, now, we're going to marry this together. And the book says, it starts out, as you read it, when it says orange, uh, yellow, green, uh, that is the order in which you, you put them in. So, I'm going to start making the near wing, right? And when I, the way I can identify whether these are the, for the near wing or not, if I should get them mixed up for some reason, I, I can see, see this is the underside, but I can see that because of the curvature, right? Because of the, the curvature here. If I pick up this feather, I want to know whether this is, whether this is for the right, whether this is right or the left wing. So I'll turn around, I'll look at the good side of it. Now, I'll pull it down like this. Then I, and, and it doesn't curve, you see? Now, if I pull it the other way, it curves. So now you get, that is for the, for the near wing. It comes from the left side of the stem, right? So I know that that is the mm -hmm. right one. When I marry the, the near wing, I hold the feathers like this. I look at the good side. This is the underside of the feather toward, in toward the fly. Here, I look at the good side when I marry them. So I hold, it starts out with the orange, and then I put the yellow on top. I line up the tips, right? line up the ends here now. And they practically fold together. Certainly make it look easy. I take the green one. Again, I look at the, at the good side of the side of the fur. Put that up on top. It takes care of itself. If you start stroking them and messing with them, you ruin them. So you just let it just touch them like this, and they just fall into place. The next one is the. Uh, Busted. Nothing to it. 
<laughs> right. Now when I when I put together the other one, now I, I, I want to I put that together to be sure that now if, if I would put that together like this and, and look at the good side now, it will come out wrong. You see, because that is the wing for this side. I don't want the orange up on top. I want to start the same way down the bottom. So now I start with the orange, and now I will be looking at the underside. I will hold the underside here on the far wing. I will look into the underside when I put them together. In that way, I can, I'm sure that when I come over here, it, 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 I get two wings that are opposite, which is really what I want. So I take this one and then the yellow. and the green. When you did the first wing, you, did you look at that from the inside too, underside? No, I looked at that from, from the top, top, from, top side. From the, from the <laughs> top side. What I will do with this one, I'll measure and see if it's right. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to do it here. I'm flattening this thing. Flattening this stem side by side. Is there a chance you might be able to move the vice just a little closer to you? Closer to me? Yes, sir. You and it are one or the other of you using focus. Are you focus, out of focus yeah. Or? Yeah. Just a little bit under the light there. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Do you want me to do the whole thing over now? No. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run out of video here shortly. <laughs> if you ask me to do that, you better run out of the room. <laughs> So it's important uh, that you get a pair of real good uh, find the tweezers like this to work out with. Really. Thank you. 
place that you can rotate that and see yeah. the top of it like mm -hmm. that. As opposed to rotating your body around this thing. You gotta be careful at this point that you don't lose your head. So if you're gonna wind some more thread on there, be sure that you don't start winding it forward. You should wind, start winding it back toward the rear, like that. It lets the wing lay more parallel to the. I, I I'm hopeful that it will sit a little better now that I get it. That actually touches the um, the wood duck feather in the tail, um, laying down to the yeah. to the uh -huh. yeah, okay. to it like this. Mm -hmm. and we look in here. This it has to sit straight up like that. And now I take my cool little cement on here. Is that the same cement, just a different container? Uh, this is different. This is Griffith's uh, cement. This is uh, the thin cement. That, that, see how thin it is? Mm -hmm. I want this to really penetrate. The other cement here is more or less like a gluing agent or as, a, as to finish off the, a nice gloss on the, on the head. When you think. But uh, there are times when you want something to really penetrate. And uh, I think I want to need a coffee break right at this point. The next thing I do, I will cut these, uh, I'll put, cut the ends off here. Well, hold on to the feathers while you do this. Cut them in like this. Hold and get them in line over the ends. You see? I got plenty of room up here for my head, which is important. Put it like this. Like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these wings in. That's where I tear them up. That's what I usually tear them off too. <laughs> Are you down on your hook side? A little yeah, bit? I'm down. No, I, yeah, it, they're down a little bit on the side. Just get it. You see, it also takes practice. Now I put a little of this on here, and on the other side, so I get them. So I'm sure that they don't move. 
So they're actually set on the top of the hook. There. Yeah, they're set on on top, but they they when they when they're tied in, they kind of they kind of go down a little bit on mm -hmm. the side, which is what I want. But I start on top, and then if I don't, then they get too far down on the side. Mm -hmm. This little this little trick of setting setting the wing here is something that you can only learn by practice, not by watching somebody else do it. But uh, it's important that you that you put pressure on the feathers when you do this. So when you come around, don't try to do it in one stroke. Just come around with your tying thread and pull toward the rear a little bit. And, and get, when they start moving, moving down a little bit, the fibers move down a little bit, come around again and do it the second time because then you've got a loop around it. And then you pull that tight. Um, there's another way it can be done, and this this was uh, Kelson. Kelson did it this way, and, and some people just have difficulties in doing this, but I can tell you, you hold it like this, you come around this finger, then you come up over the, over the wing, come down this way, and then grab the near, near one together, the, the near part of the loop, and this, you see, you, you now have a complete loop around your, see, there's a complete loop around here now. <coughs> and then you pull this tight. That's quite you get a direct pull down on all the fibers. <coughs> you don't get the torque of the thread when you pull it that will have a tendency to pull the fibers over. So this is something that you can practice. Do you ever use a reverse? Not thread? anymore. I, I, I don't use a reverse anymore. I used to. But I found a method of, of putting wings on now where you don't need to reverse it. Uh, you had a fairly big build up to a thread. When yeah, you, you, if you can get a build up of thread there. Yeah. Now the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to prepare the, the sides, which is uh, <coughs> Tip it's it, no, it's it's plywood uh, and and teal. And here you see the quality of organic material. It's really, really nice. This is the package that you get. You pay more for the material, but mm -hmm. you get the best. And there's nothing like a, this. These are three ninety five for four feathers. And it's worth it. You get a lot of flies out of four feathers if you, you get the good material. Is he still putting out a catalog? No, I a brief he, catalog. No, he he sent out some little things now and then. I, but he is it, he's a little this there's been a money shortage in the business. You know, people have been, uh, have had other things. It's been a hard time for some people. Uh, the recession and, and all that stuff. You know. See, oh, yeah. the same, yes, you see the quality of this? Mm -hmm. The same uh, thing happened with, with these feathers here, where you uh, if, if you look at the feathers here and I have, you cannot use both sides here. You have to have two feathers. You have to have one from the left side of the bird, one from the right side of the bird in order to do this. So here I have one. They are paired up, you see. This is from one side. So if you have those two, two feathers here, these two, And we say that, that the stem was in this, these stems were together. You have a right side, and you have, you have a right and left, right? Now the same thing happened. The right one is for the far wing, the left one is for the right wing. Now when you did the tail from the barbed wood duck, you took the short side. Is yeah, the short side, and doubled it lengthwise. What, why did, you, what was the advantage? Just because you had better control Be, because over Because I don't want, uh, I, don't, I don't want, if I don't do it, 
the bars are a little shorter on the, 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 okay. the on the on the far, on the other side. Um, sometimes I could get. Sometimes I can find feathers with uh, with markings that are that are not as as wide as this. But on this feather frame that I used, you can see the markings up here are very wide. So if I if I use that and I tie it in, I only see black and white. I don't see any of the mm -hmm. the, the other fibers there. So now you see it's about divided pretty evenly. That's because on this side here. The bars are not nice. as, as wide, okay. and that's what I did now. So I just take one piece and I double it lengthwise. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take I need one slip on this one. And uh, the 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 bar stuff there is not really what the it's Mandarin duck, which is almost impossible to get. But the wood duck worked just as as fine. He just uh, gave me these because they were. Just take these and put them on the pile of the rest of the stuff. You can put them up. Yeah, it's pack it up, pack it up, and take it back. You know, take travel with it. So, okay. This. Take this and marry that underneath. Which one's on the bottom? The teal. Teal's on the bottom. Yeah, teal is on the bottom. The teal should not, the tips of the teal should not come out all the way out to the tip here. It should be a little shorter than the wood duck, so they kind of blend together. Like that. Now, the length, the length of them, they should reach down to right above the black pearl butt.
sometimes these are a little tough to get naturally. Okay, so they're going to reach down the here, so I'm going to cut them off here. To length. And then I take the other one, I cut those, cut that to the same length, so they be the same size. Now I take some sweat here. I've found that this is a very good way of putting them on. I take some sweat here and I make an overhand nut. It's like a, this is how you make wind march, you know, like this. <laughs> Always hold on to the wing while you do that. talk to these feathers a little bit, they kind of pull them away. Get it. So, nice. I can see why you get five dollars a fly now. <laughs> <laughs> 
you see the importance of being able to look at the far side of the fly and, and sure, when, when sure. you have this ankle on here, the fly lays flat. And uh, they, they have another one. He has another one, a very reasonable one. I, I have one of those too, mm -hmm. the smaller one, which is around $100. That's a yeah. travel one? Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very, very nice for the kind of thing. And you can, you can put in uh, large hooks, five wire hooks, no problem. I travel, I used it when I went to Europe last summer, I, I had that one with me. And it worked very good and weighs nearly nothing, you know. I got know that I had enough stuff with me. In Italy Airport was that. Have you been to England? You've been in Italy Airport? Yeah. But Hito Airport is like big shopping center. <laughs> I mean, it is twice. You don't know you're in the airport. In the airport. Last time I, I, I went there, you know, back then I had all the worried about sabotage and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. And I had, wow. I had my rods with me. Oh, jeez. two people pulled, they pulled me, literally pulled me out, out took yeah. me aside into the yeah. room and yeah. made me open the thing up to see what you yeah. was in there. They thought I had a gun I was coming through. Yeah, with. right. Bazooka. <laughs> 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 uh, these things, uh, you know, they come now with the porcelain in here, you know, Ceramics, ceramics in two. And what I do is, uh, and, and this little rubber hose I put on here serves two purposes. First of all, it, it holds the swing thread, and you don't, it doesn't accidentally pull out, and also protect protects the the ceramic so it doesn't get scarred when I when I travel. So it has it lays around in there, rattle around. You made that? Yeah, it's a little tube. Yeah, mm -hmm. you go to the, you go to a hobby shop and get some fuel line for a model aircraft, right, you know, right. you know kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and then I just put a put a little screw in there just to have a handle on it, mm -hmm. you know, so it's close to the end. Who makes that bottle? This one is made by uh, Thompson. Yeah. All right. The next thing we're going to do is going to get some junk cockeyes on there. You can't buy that here, can No. Oh. Uh, you can, uh, there again, these things are uh, offered to you, know, you know, sometimes you get, when you come up and, and have some junk cock available. If you see a good one, then buy it. It's, uh, <coughs> You don't use that many feathers. Stop drooling there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy it? Maybe a quarter for it. Mm -hmm. A quarter of a million? <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, what do you use for these feathers? This speck of pasta here, which is. Uh, this is about a hundred dollars worth, I think. No. But it's not necessary to use this anymore. You could use turkey, you substitute some of the model turkeys. If you look, if you get an opportunity to go through a whole bunch of them, you can find, pick out the ones with the markings that are very, very, very close. That's a nice neck. <laughs> <laughs> No. Good color. Yeah. That should come down to about the middle. <coughs> of the, come down to the middle of the of the size there, the wood duck. And, uh, 
And here again, when you tie those in, you can sometimes be in trouble with, the, with them twisting. So I do the same thing on the jungle cork as I did on the, you see these little fibers there? Mm -hmm. I cement them down on the side and, and get a, a kind of like a flat surface. Now for fishing, I wouldn't go through all this. When I tie a fishing fly, I, I don't go through all this. I don't care if they're a little twisted. And the fish are going to mess them up anyway. When you get this, when you buy the um, as nails here. I take, I cut, but to cut the brush in half, cut in half of the, the strands off the brush. It's, it's a little, little big. When I need it. Super. It's just it's just like you just tack them so they they don't move once you get them in the position you want. <coughs> As you can see, you can tie two materials in when you tie the third one in, everything goes out of place. So it's cutting cutting a little down on the frustration of doing that. Griffin hit cement? Yeah. Griffin hit cement. Now I need a crest. This one is pretty crooked, you see. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it's a nice looking, looking crest, but it's just a little bit crooked. Let me see if I can get some lukewarm water. curvature in front here, and I can get this with my fingernail. Flatten the stem. 
Fibers to flare down on the wing, or on uh, the if possible. Yeah. You see, there still is the tip out here is twisted, but there's nothing I can do about that. We just have to leave it that way. Oh, but that gives you an idea of how to how to do this or how not to do this. And so uh, this is uh, it's pretty crooked, but there's nothing I can do to straighten it out any further. Than that. short study here. Yeah. like this and it's crooked but uh, we have to leave it that way.
from the giver. I'll show you how much is involved in one of these things. Well, it's, it's uh, a lot of it is quality of material. Oh, yeah. In time, large flies like it. More difficult. Well, if if I had been able to control the crest here, if I had some some of the crests I had, I would, I would, this wouldn't have been nearly perfect. Not perfect, but certainly been better. It's amazing what what it will do to my eyes when I see a crooked thing like that. Uh, Question is, did you learn something? Oh, yeah. You're yeah. pretty close to the 12 o'clock hour. No, I figured that we'll be able to finish that. Yeah, it's 12, 12 10. Right. Yeah. Hey, it's pretty good timing. And then we'll have some lunch, and then we'll come back, and then we'll tie the stack one. Any day we're going to be, of course, we've got the hotel. We also have a Shoney's nearby. And you have a who? Shoney's Family oh. Restaurant. Uh, they have good hamburgers. They have uh, probably some McDonald's. And <laughs> my Shoney's was a salad bar. My kids were in college. They, they had a bet going between my three kids who was going to get their old man into my car. None of them succeeded. Do you think you can succeed? <laughs> You're the <laughs> ultimate challenger down there. Uh, I'd like to, since I'm a little stock in it. Hey, what about you? Know, you <laughs> want me back in my car and get rid of it. You know, buy Polaroid. <laughs> what about the place to the, what's the place?